Okay, so this is kind of a long one, so I'll try to make it as concise as possible. Um, I uh, was born in the United States, in Illinois. Uh, my parents were born in Iraq. My dad came here um, in the 50s, and he went to the University of Kansas uh, to study engineering. My mom came here in the 80s uh, with him. So, I graduated Stevenson High School in Lincolnshire, Illinois, um, and I had a 1.8 GPA when I was there. So, I figured I am not going to be the person who's going to do well in school, and I did try college for like a year. I went to Westwood College of Technology, which is one of those like fake schools you see advertised on television that are not accredited to like... Uh, come to the school, we'll teach you like how to make video games, but like it's bullshit. And um, I don't remember ever even having an exam the entire time that I was there. I was there for like a year and gave up on it. Um, so I left home when I was 19 and then when I was 20, uh, my family and I made up and then I bought a home, which was the worst mistake I had ever made in my entire life in Round Lake, Illinois. So I was living there and I was working at AT&T selling phones and internet and everything and I was making the most money I'd ever made in my life at that point. I made $46,000 a year and I was praying five times a day and I was really grateful to God for you know affording me an excellent job with good benefits and a good income. And then, in January of 2011, uh, my manager's manager came in, and he saw an interaction with a customer, and he's like, I really like what you did with that customer, and she asked, can I speak to your manager? I said, actually, my manager's manager is right here, and um, she told him that you know I did a really great job, and he was really happy about that. He's like, can I talk to you in the back? I said, sure. So I went back with him, and he said, you're fired. Why? You remember that mileage report you filled out? Yeah, I sat next to the manager and filled it out with him. No, not that one. The one before that. The one that I didn't submit? Yeah, it had an error on it. Had nothing to do... The reason they fired me was because I filled out a mileage report incorrectly. It was because I was praying at work. So I brought it up with the union. Two years later, by the time I had already completely forgot about it, uh, the union... Uh, said, we have won a claim on your behalf and I got a check for $800. And I'm like, whatever. So I was really sad and I went to go work at LA Fitness and I was selling gym memberships there. And when I was there, um, I was working Monday through Friday from 5 o'clock in the morning until midnight and Saturday from 8 to 8. So I really had no life because I was just at the gym all the time. And I was just trying to like hit my sales quota. I only got paid for 40 hours a week, which is illegal for them to do, but um, the weekend general manager left because when customers canceled their memberships, they took it against his sales quota, so it made it impossible for him to earn any money, so he left. So I was the acting weekend general manager, and then I hit quota, I was doing well, my manager congratulated me, and then my manager's manager came in and was like, oh, they're finally going to promote me. You're fired. Why? Can you think of anything you did or said? No. Okay, well, maybe that's the problem. So, because they didn't give me any reason for why they fired me, then I went to go and file for an unemployment claim with the Illinois Department of Employment Security. And that took a couple weeks for my claim to go through. In the meantime, I was crying myself to sleep every night. I really hated myself. I was wondering why, you know, no one liked me, no one wanted to work with me, why I was so worthless. And I thought my life was going to be that I would hold a job for a couple months and lose it. Hold a job for a couple months and lose it. Hold a job for another couple months and lose it. And I thought that that was going to be my life. Until I got the letter in the mail from IDES. And the day that I got that letter, 
was one of the best and worst days of my life. It said in the letter, your claim for unemployment insurance has been denied because LA Fitness claims that you made a threat towards a manager and another employee, which never happened. So I just smiled from ear to ear because at that moment I realized they fired me for a fake reason that didn't happen and there was nothing wrong with me. So I, um, I went to the gym and I talked to the operations manager and I said, um, where is Giuliano? And she said, um, Giuliano is not a manager anymore. I said, well, where is he? He's a sales counselor at Round Lake. So he got demoted not to like assistant manager, no, to peon. And so I was like, wow, what the hell did he do so that like they demoted him two levels? And so I showed her the letter and she's like, Tarek, I don't know what they're talking about. Any threat. You were nice to everybody when you were here. And I was thinking, I was like, well, they said a threat towards a manager or another employee. Like a, another employee I could imagine because there's a lot of people who work at the gym. Like I don't know all of them very well. So like maybe somebody has schizophrenia and hears voices and thinks that like I said something that I didn't say. I was like a manager. There were only five managers and I was friends with all of them. So... um, I went to my hearing for the Illinois Department of Employment Security. Before I did, I called LA Fitness um, and I talked to their corporate line. The lady put me on hold for 14 minutes. She came back. She said, sir, I'm so sorry for putting you on such a long hold. I have changed your record. I said that you did not make any threat. You can go ahead and file your claim. I'm like, okay. So then I went uh, to my hearing at uh, the Illinois Department of Employment Security and the lady said, I told her the whole story and everything that happened. She put down her pen and she said, all right, Mr. Alani, I never said this to any of my customers. And I'm going to tell you, I'm approving your claim right now because LA Fitness does this all the time. I felt so validated at that moment because that was when I realized that like I did not get fired for a real reason. The gym was not doing well financially or whatever, and they just wanted to get rid of people, employees, and they didn't want to pay unemployment, so they just made up some shitty reasons so they don't have to pay unemployment um, insurance. So I started, I got my money not only from that day forward, but since the day I applied. So my first check from them was like pretty big. And then I was like doing better, but still like jobless, even though I had an income now. So my half brother called me my dad's son, and he said, um, Alex didn't show up to work for the third time, so I fired him. So I need somebody just for a couple hours a day, five days a week. Yeah, it turned out to be all day, seven days a week, which was fine because I could have used the money. Um, so I said, but Lath, I'm getting a check from uh, unemployment. He said, that's fine. I'll just pay cash under the table till your unemployment runs out, and then I'll give you a check. I said, okay, that's fine. So I was working there, got caught up on my bills, and then people would come in to the gas station and ask me, how you doing? And I would say, I'm depressed. Why? Because I have an IQ of 131 and I'm working at a gas station. Why don't you go to school? So I came up with every excuse. I was like, well, if I go to school, when will I go to the gym? Tarek, your gym is 24 hours. Okay. Well, if I go to the school, if I go to school, then how will I be able to afford it? Tarek, you told me the Voc Rehab was going to help you with your tuition. Okay. Well, if I go to school, how am I going to do your homework? Tarek, you told me that they can help you with your accommodations. Okay. But if I go to school, how will I work here at the gas station? So my half-brother told me something that no one had ever offered me. He said, Tarek, you find out when your classes are, and I will change the work schedule of everyone else who's here so that you can go to school. No employer had ever offered me that before. So I went to uh, the Illinois um, Department of uh, Human Services, Division of Rehabilitation Services, and I told them that I want to go to school and I believe that I have a mental disability and um, you know I want accommodations, stuff like that. So they gave me a psychological evaluation. And when I was going through the evaluation, uh, Dr. Pavolni got through about 20% of the test, took off her glasses, I said, what? She said, wait a minute. Is this one of those tests that keeps getting harder? She said, yes, you're brilliant. And so you're going to be here forever. 
So normally she gives that test and it like takes 20 minutes because people fail out like really easily. And I was there for three hours with her. So at the end, she was like, this was actually a really enjoyable experience because I never get to get to the end of the test and you did really well. So we found out that my cognitive fluency was really poor, but my math problem solving skills were high. So considering I wanted to go into engineering, she said, that's actually really good for you because you need to be in an environment where you need to be given a good amount of time to solve a very complex problem. So I could do that. So then I looked at all 184 public universities in the United States, excuse me, 142 public universities in the United States that offer engineering. And um, I knew that I wanted to go someplace public because I wanted to compel the university to provide my academic accommodations. Because if I went to a private university, they don't necessarily receive federal funds, so they don't necessarily have to provide accommodations, but land grant institutions have to. So I went to, um, you know, the list of all the engineering universities from ABET, and I started looking through them, and I narrowed it down to three from 142. So it was either Texas Agriculture and Mechanical or Cleveland State University or University of Massachusetts Lowell. Texas A&M didn't have the doctoral program that I wanted because I knew I wanted to go all the way with it. They just had um, like general engineering, which I knew I didn't want to do a business degree. I wanted like computers. And so it was either between CSU or UML. And CSU was okay, but their website looked really lackluster and it seemed like more of a biomedical focus, not so much of a computer focus. And I didn't want to do just that. So then I came to UML, which honestly had the nicest looking website of any university that I visited on the web. So I looked there and I applied there and I got accepted. So then in 2014, I came here. And then three years later, I earned my bachelor's degree in computer engineering. I did uh, my minors in biomedical technology, robotics, business, and economics. I also graduated from the Honors College. I was the only one from the class of 2017 in computer engineering to graduate from the Honors College. Graduated magna cum laude. And then in May of 2018, I graduated with my master's degree in computer engineering. My uh, certificates were in very large scale integration and microelectronics, uh, field program Bulgate arrays, and um, integrated engineering systems and in uh, medical imaging and instrumentation. And I graduated cum laude. And so I'm now I'm a doctoral student. And I know like a lot of people see me around the dining hall, like sometimes I'll wear like a fox hat or something like that. So because like, because of the fox hat or like the ears or whatever, I get called like fox kid sometimes. Not because of fox hall, but because of the fox. Um, and what's really helped me, what really made it, so that I could actually do well in school was because I went to neurofeedback. My father died in 2009 from cancer. The nurse asked me what I do for a living and I told her that I was selling cell phones. And she said, you're really smart. How come you're not in school? I said, well, I have ADHD. I'll never be able to concentrate. She said, why don't you go for biofeedback? I said, what is biofeedback? So I looked it up. They put some gel in my hair. They put uh, some hair clips on the gel. The hair clips had wires attached to them. The wires went to a box and the box goes to a computer. The computer measured my brain waves, the voltage from my scalp over time. And then based on that, they were able to get information about the frequency of the waves and the location, the amplitude, power, and then they, based on that, they were able to design a QEEG, quantitative electroencephalograph. And it showed the regions in the brain where I was having difficulty. So then the next time I would come in, they'd hook me up to the machine, but I'd play a video game, but not with my hands. I would play it with my thoughts. So they'd say, make Pac-Man eat the dots, or make the cheetah run from the left side of the screen to the right, or make a hot air balloon go up, or make the music sound, or watch the movie and make sure it's at full brightness or make sure the sound is at full volume. And I'd have to concentrate with my thoughts so that it would do that. And I noticed the thoughts 
that would make it do it the best was when I thought about my dad or my brothers, uh, especially like thoughts from childhood. So after I did that therapy, I graduated with um, from community college and I had a 4.0 GPA and then I did my master's or my bachelor's magna cum laude and I did my uh, master's in cum laude. So I did very, very well because of that nurse. She was not able to save my father's life, but she was able to save mine. <laughs>